The human mind is known to possess an insatiable appetite for information consumption. One of several modes of packaging information for human consumption is magazine publishing. All through the ages, many entrepreneurs have made huge fortunes from the magazine publishing business. Despite the lull recorded in the global magazine publishing space in recent years, however, many new players are boldly venturing into the sector and recording giant strides through the development of savvy business acumen and intelligent, innovative ideas. The Talk TV crew on this episode hosts one of such persons, a humanities graduate who, after a sterling career as a magazine advert executive, successfully transited into the entrepreneurial world as a magazine publisher and has since continued to innovate his way to the bank. Welcome, Bolade Adeshokon, founder, CEO, Media Choice Group. Mr. Mobolade Adeshokon, yes, you're welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Now, you are an, a publisher with a difference, innovating in the publishing industry. How would you describe your business model to a layman? Well, um, <clears throat> our business model is such that um, creates narratives okay. around events, milestone events, and landmark, landmark um, anniversaries for our clients. Well, um, to some people, that's just all grammar. Can you please break it down? Yeah. Um, more than um, nearly a decade ago, when we came up with this idea, we realized that um, um, around here, in our climb, we don't really document history. Uh, true, so, true. Yeah, so we find out that um, there's a vacuum in the media space where um, our business model can fit in perfectly by creating narratives for landmark events, landmark achievements, landmark or milestone anniversaries. Milestone anniversaries. All over. Um, I still want to dig deeper. The business model seeks to identify persons, organizations or groups or even societies that are marking a milestone in their life, like an anniversary or maybe a special event or what have you. Isn't that what some of the magazines existing do where they have this special cover or special features? Yeah, that, that's, that's what, basically, that's not what they do because, I mean, telling 70 years story can hardly fit into a pull out. So, so what you do is to dedicate an entire publication. An entire publication milestone. for the milestone event. Okay. So that from one from chapter one to the last can, can we please illustrate with examples? So that some of our viewers out there will have a much clearer understanding okay. of what this business model seeks to achieve. Okay. For instance, the, the last uh, publication, our latest, our new baby. Your most recent project. Yes, which is um, Milestones of the Premier University. It was um, University of Ibadan. The University of Ibadan. That um, came, uh, became eight, 70 years. Okay. Uh, founded in 1948. Yeah. So UI was 70 this year. Yeah, recently. So the UI at 70 project yes. is your most recent project. As the most recent. And using that as an illustration, how would you relate that to your business model? So we approached the university to give us an endorsement letter to undertake that project at no cost. To the university. To the university. Of course, before now, there have been many, many other publications for University of Ibadan. There's you are at 25, you are at 50, you are at 60. But if you go to other institutions, you will find out there is nothing for 70 years. But you have been very consistent. So we, what we needed to do was to continue the conversation from the 60th 
1978. That's 10 years. Mm. But we still have to go back to inception. To inception. So that you can some have of the a things, total capture. Yeah, some of the things that were never talked about. Mm. We, we needed to find out and then include them in the latest um, one. Is it only institutions that you um, approach to document their history, their antecedents, and what they're about? No, not only institutions. We also. So, how will um, you describe the profile of your target customer? Well, the profile of our target customer is um, our, our magazines, um, our publications, rather. Uh, sure, is elitist because um, um, we we target institutions, okay. personalities have um, goodwill. With the public? With, the pub with their various publics. Okay. Without goodwill, it will be difficult for us to drive the project. So the project thrives on the goodwill of the, the clients. Goodwill of the clients. Existing goodwill of the yes. clients. Yes. Um, what about individuals? Same with individuals. I applaud you for this innovative idea, okay. which I must say is very germane to our society. We are a society that do not like to document our activities. And so when we find someone like you, a publisher, devoting its publication interest to documenting history rather than just projecting news or information, it's new in our climb, it's novel, but most importantly, it's a value addition to society's information archive. But uh, there's something that I, I'm worried about. When you say that you seek out individuals or institutions who have good will, and all you require from them is just an endorsement letter to undertake the project, you don't require any funds or money from them. You generate your own fund. So, for, if, for, for free, you publish for them, but they have to give you an endorsement letter that allows you to dig around them and move around them yeah. to talk to their stakeholders and other relevant persons. That's right. How then do you guarantee creative control? Well, um, uh, 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 let me put it together. How then do you guarantee editorial control? and creative control, which are very important to a publisher. Yes. Uh, at, at inception, when we approach, we approach our clients with um, our editorial outline. Yeah. So, from day one, there's a buy-in. Yeah. From day one, we have from a roadmap. From the client. From the client. Yeah. We have a roadmap. So, from day one, there's a buy-in. This is what we want to talk about. Okay, you are the one that will tell the client this is what you want to so talk about. Yeah, we initiate the editorial outline okay. of the publication. These are the things we want to talk so about. So before you get the endorsement letter, yes. you will have provided the editorial outline, yes. outlay yes. of the what your editorial focus and your editorial yes. interest and activities will be like. Absolutely. So the client already has a foreknowledge Absolutely. about what you want to do Absolutely. before they give you endorsement letter. Absolutely. And that's, you're telling me now that that's your own strategy for ensuring editorial control. Absolutely. Because sometimes we also allow clients, because this is a partnership. It's a partnership in the sense that um, when approval or endorsement letter is given, yeah. the client must also support us, uh, not financially, okay. but um, every other means of support that the client can give to open doors for interviews with people, to give us access to materials, their archives, and many of their stakeholders, you know. So it's, it's a partnership between our company and the client. In your experience, because knowing many of our people, they might buy in at inception and later on begin to meddle in some ways, doesn't that happen? Isn't well, that a well, challenge for you? No, mo most of the time, we, we, we've never had that experience, to say the truth. 
in all of your more than ten of, years in of all operation, of our, in all of our, you've never had client in, medicineness. You no, know, less than ten years. In no. less than ten years, we've never had any of such instances. It's gladdening that you've not been having challenges of client medicineness. No. No. But what about the creative aspect? You know, because as a publisher, yes. it's not only about dishing out information; it's also about dishing out information in the most creative yeah. manner possible. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you experience medicineness in your creative flow? No, because we, you know, like I said, we work in partnership with our clients. Yeah. And we always take into cognizance the brand that we are dealing with. Okay. So, if, if for instance, your, your, the, color, the color preference of a brand matters to us. Mm, mm. You know, we can't go outside, outside that and do something else when we know that this client has a preference you know so we take very good um, 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 knowledge mm. of the client all the all the chemistry around the client <coughs> we take it into cognizance yeah. in all our dealings and our creative and that has assured that, that has helped you because to maintain... the, truth, the truth of the matter is the the publication belongs to the client mm. uh, once we get their buying the publication belongs to them yes is our is our um, um is our creation but we don't over celebrate our input Okay. Yes. We we'll play down on that. Now that you've um, clarified for us, we can go into what will interest a lot of our viewers out there. Coming up. Well, we've talked about the revenue streams. Revenue stream, the stream won't flow to you if you don't prospect for it. Definitely. How do you source for business? How do you then make money? You produce a publication for your client at no fee without charging the client. Yet you invest so much money into research because there will be this the logistics of the research that the quantum research that you will be doing uh, is humongous. The, the, the production costs, among other costs and logistics. How then do you generate revenue? Yeah, thank you. The, the good will of this, it. To make this a profitable business. You know, I said from uh, earlier on that the good will of the client with his pay, stakeholders pay our bills. How? Thank you. Um, there, are, there, are, there are three um, sources of um, income okay. that we look at. Um, one is um, congratulatory messages okay. from all stakeholders. Um, second is um, corporate adverts okay. from stakeholders, and third is sales. You know, sale of the publication. Sales of the publication on the newsstand or where? No, we don't sell on newsstands. Okay. We sell to stakeholders. To stakeholders. Yes. Okay. Everybody would like to have a copy. What that means is that your production must be ready before the, the day yes. that the anniversary or the milestone or the event will, will or take, the place. Event will take yes. place and we are always visible at the event place to sell yes the goodwill congratulatory messages do you does that mean that you have an advert team or marketing team that goes out to interface with those stakeholders or is it that the clients will do that like no 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 we don't leave anything to our clients okay. outside the endorsement letter okay we do our job like a professional we have editorial team we have researchers we have um, people who work on archival materials we have um, a marketing team as well so it's a complete um team so, so there are about four or five units yes. within your organization. Yes. The marketing stroke uh, advert team, yes. the research team, the research editorial team, team editorial. archival team, production production team. Yes. What about the admin and accounts? You know, our model operates in a way that people can multitask. 
Okay. Yes. I mean, you can't just sit down in the office and say, yeah, I'm a mean person when there's a whole lot of work to be done. So people combine one or two things together. Okay. You know? So these are the three main revenue streams. Those are, the are there others? Basically, those are the three main. Basically, ones. those are the three. And I assume those three have been paying off. Otherwise, you will still not be you will still not be in business. So, how do you fix what should be charged for each of these three services? How do you determine the advert rate, for well, instance? Yeah, our advert rate is. Um, so is it a flat rate? It's a flat rate across all publications. Across all publications, it's a flat rate because we have done this over time and then we know how the industry is you know so it's a flat rate for all our publications what about the goodwill messages how do you charge for that it's the same it's the same so is it a flat rate for goodwill messages whether you're having a celebration a birthday celebration for yes. an individual like tinobu yes or you are working for UCH Assist, which is another project of yes, yours that yeah. I, I stumbled upon. Yeah. It's the flat rate it's across flat rate. board. It's so that saves rate. you a lot of headache in terms of costing yes, your production or whatever. Yeah. Now, let me go to the next question, which is the profile of your average clients. I want you to give us, although you, had, you gave us a broad overview, earlier but i want you to specify in explicit specific terms okay. just list for us the kind of clients you've had or clientele you've had over time yes you know like i said when we started this we we looked more from the angle of personalities okay you know but with time, we extended to institutions. Okay. What about corporate organizations? Then corporate organizations, we are yet to have any so far. But institutions, we've done for about um, five, six institutions as well. Tertiary institutions in all? Yes. Tertiary institutions. What about post-primary institutions? Yes. We've also been involved in um, something with... Um, um, secondary school was celebrating 70 years. And what in secondary 15. school would that be? Olivet. Olivet Baptist, Olivet Baptist Heights. Heights. Yeah. That's my hometown. Yeah. We produced the special publication for the 70th anniversary wow. in 2015. And I bet all the alumni who could get down to Oyo were at yes, yes, to witness yes, the event because yes. that's a master. Yes. The publication has a brochure site okay. with the names of all um, old students okay. from inception till date. All old students for 70 years. For 70 years. Your researchers must be very, very sharp. Definitely. Well, that's one of the strongest points of our publications, okay. research. So besides tertiary institutions and educational institutions, yes. which other category of the society has fallen into your clientele in the past? Well, because I know well, you now, did a publication for UCH at 60. Yeah, the, uh, UCH is also an institution. Yeah, you know, medical. Because they teach in hospital. hospital. So I categorize them as one of the. Um, so private individuals do, do not, who are not governors do not qualify. Is yeah, because you know, we, we have approached some in the past, but we never got the green light. So it's not that they don't qualify. But you know, so sometimes you market we some private yes, we marketed, we've marketed them in the past. So, what's the profile of the kind of private individual that can qualify to feature in one of your publications? A, a man with large chunk of goodwill, large chunk of goodwill, That's not necessarily monetary wealth, no, no. Goodwill. just goodwill. Yes. As someone who has been a teacher for over 28 years, exactly. I should qualify. Exactly. If I have goodwill, goodwill. with my former goodwill students. Student. And all your stakeholders. And all of my other stakeholders. Your associations, uh, your, uh, your professional bodies. bodies and all of that. Wow. Yes. Wow. Well, we've talked about the revenue streams. Revenue st the stream won't flow to you. If you don't prospect for it, Definitely. how do you source for business? Yeah, that again, we we we, we rely basically on uh, research um, engine hmm. 
to find out, fish out all stakeholders anywhere on planet Earth. So once we do that, once we can link you with the client, of course we come after you and say, are you aware of this? That the cl your client is um, celebrating this and that. And then because there's goodwill, yeah, you know, you will be excited to be part of it. So it's all about research. Research. Then you go after yes. those you have identified yes. as uh, potential clients yes. as well as their stakeholders, stakeholders and collaborators. Every stakeholder, whether internal or external public, is a potential client. You still not told us how you set after those that your research has produced because the research will throw up some names. Yes, you know, we have, of course, we have an endorsement letter. Do you do cold calls? We have an endorsement letter. Before you obtain the endorsement letter, you have to prospect the client. No. We don't start anything before the endorsement letter. Okay. So it's after the endorsement letter, then we go after our work. Okay. You know, without the endorsement letter, we don't start anything. That means you must be spending a lot on transportation, hotel reservation, air flights, Definitely. and phone calls. Definitely. Because, you know, we've handled clients that are half stakeholders all over Nigeria. Mm. And then we go everywhere. Mm. And the logistics of doing that, are there some tricks and secrets you want to divulge to us? No, it's um, basically financial. You know, you must raise the money to, to fly the project. That's that's um, that's a. So how, <laughs> how do you raise the money from those sources, from those revenue bases? No, but before the revenues fall in, you have to fund the operation. Yes, you know, immediately we we get our endorsement letter. We uh, normally, as a company, you know, we set aside a fund to start up the, the project. Yeah, and then. Before three, three, four weeks, streams of income will open we'll start up. coming in. You're that confident. And we've been doing it for a while. Yeah, so. yeah. As long as we, we get it right from the angle of researching in the client first, does this client have the goodwill to drive this project? If, if the answer is perfect, then we don't run into any trouble. Financial wise to no. fund the logistics yeah. of yeah. the operation. Yeah. Now, every business requires marketing strategy. Yes. Does yours have one? Yeah, we do. The, the strategy is the goodwill. Okay. Uh, to locate the people with the good, where, I mean, where um, the client has planted those goodwill. We we'll locate them anywhere on planet Earth. And that's your marketing strategy. That's the marketing strategy. What about promotional strategy? The client itself must have been making a whole lot of noise about the anniversary. True. You know, and then um, we being part of it, you know, we just key ourselves in to so many of the promotional um, activities. Oh, that client. means you will do a kind of study of the client's promotional activities. Yes. And try to plug yourself in. I'm plugging. Coming up. One of the things that pinches me most as a businessman is to do a one-off business with people or with businesses. Because it's not to my advantage. All right, let's look at... Um, Customer retention because repeat patronage yes. is the soul of business advancement. Yes. You've done, for example, maybe you've done Femi Padalat 25, you probably want to do Femi Padalat 50, 75, 90, 100. Yeah. How do you ensure that I come back well, at my next know, milestone event? Yeah, you know, our, our job. You know, our job speaks for us. And don't give me that one about, oh, our job is so qualitative, it speaks for us. No, our job speaks for us, then the competence that we bring in 
is um, is rare yeah. around here. Really? I, I used to ask people, do you know any other person who does this? I put it to you. Do you know any other person who does this? Well, don't put it to me. I do the asking. The <laughs> so, that is so unique that for now, you know, we are just in our space. So, the conscientious devotion that you manifest, yeah. you are convinced that no one else, it's difficult for anyone else to replicate it. It's not impossible, but okay. you know, um, when we deliver an excellent job, yeah. it's um, a guarantee, it's almost a guarantee that if all other variables are in place, yeah. you'll be able to do business again. You'll come back again. Yeah, you'll come back again. What about follow-up after the project has been delivered successfully? What yes. about follow-up activities or relationship marketing activities? Yeah, you know, you most do any of such. Most of the institutions that we deal with have um, leadership that have um, tenure based. specific tenure. Um, somebody said the difference between a rebel and a patriot is the person in power. Yeah. If your man is no longer there, you know, it might be difficult to push things. So, what about organizations and individuals who will also fall into? the uh, net of your target customers yes that's what i'm saying so what we do to leave a mark an indelible mark that will ensure repeat that we ensure repeat project is we we try as much as possible not to be greedy so our publications in spite of not getting a dime from the client we we'll still leave them with complimentary copies, free of charge. Free. Yeah. While we sell to others, we we'll give our clients free copies. Large volumes. Large volumes. So they can use it for their PR purposes. And that, for me, is also relationship marketing yes. because it's like giving souvenirs yes. to your clients. Yes. So the only thing that can make us lose a business is when we sleep. What I mean by when we sleep is, okay, the anniversary is around the corner and we are not proposing. Then somebody else comes up and says, I can do this thing too now. Uh, you can give me approval. You know? And you don't sleep. Well, we I reckon. We don't. I <laughs> like the way you say, ah, we don't. We don't. <laughs> we, 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 we don't because, we don't, last. because we don't want to go out of business. So we true. can't afford to sleep. True, true. Yeah. So you must be on top of your game. Yes. Are you then telling me that you've never had a case of one person who is dissatisfied with your service well there may be one or two um complaints you know which always is a welcome thing for us it makes us better yeah. when clients say says um you should have done it this way yeah. or that way we i mean we take those um, as valuable um learning curves for mm -hmm. us but generally generally we are always ending up with applaud because so you've never had a case of a customer who is so dissatisfied with your service that he or she says don't even show up at my door okay never it would happen because um we don't take any risk you know right from inception we show him the editorial outline mm -hmm. we stick to it in your, in your opinion the antidote to having dissatisfied clients is to be professional exactly. and to have integrity and adhere to exactly the spelt out agreements yes. in terms yes. in terms of what you promise to deliver exactly so you deliver as promised yes all right uh, let's talk about your projects i know we've mentioned a few of them uh, but i still like to know which one do you consider as the most memorable well for me um right now we have about um three different products 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 yeah. okay tell us about we that. have one for um government people in government okay the governors that's that's a different one public uh officials so, yeah. so that's a different one from the one we do for institutions so that's a category that's a category and the one, yes, the one we do with institutions. Institutions, institutions of learning. That's another one. 
than the one we do with post-primary schools. Okay. Yeah. So, so which is the most memorable? All of them are, the first of its kind are always the most memorable. For you? Yes, for us. The very first one you do? Yes, for us. So that. now that you haven't handled, you've been prospecting for but you admitted now that you've not been able to pin down any private no, person. No, not yet. So what it means is that that private person's project would be the most memorable for you. I'm yeah, just uh, yeah, trying to be... Yeah. If we're able to get one now, but of course, you know, it's an endless ocean of possibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even the ones that we're doing, we cannot, we can't, we can't get, I mean, we can't do enough. Tell us about your most recent project, which is the UI at 70. Yeah, the... I've got this voluminous publication here, mm -hmm. which uh, is about 300... Oh, 16 pages. Three, oh, 316 pages yeah. of uh, lots of pictures, that, I mean, I did postgraduate programs in UI okay. and um, going through the pages, there were many e venues that I saw which brought, which brought nostalgic uh, feelings exactly. to me. I also saw some individuals which uh, I never knew ever passed through UI, yeah, exactly. uh, but I was able to see some of them that you interviewed here. Yeah. And uh, I saw things <laughs> that um, some of us here would consider as very alien. Okay. Um, so when the permanent site stone was being laid by Sir William Five, yeah. uh, December 28, 1946, and the photograph is there. Yeah. All white people in the photograph. I could barely see well, just a few black guys behind them. Yeah. And you want to convince me that all of the logistics that went into this, which has, which I reckon must have cost a fortune, that all of those logistics were funded and paid back through your uh, goodwill messages and the advertisements that you got. All of, it. all of it. All of it. The third revenue stream that you talked about, which is also the unit sale. Yes. So how much does this cost now? Um, this this is um, twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand. Uh, yeah. I think it's worth it. But uh, don't you get complaints from people? Well, since we've started selling, nobody has complained because the quality, the the depth of the information, you know, everybody wants to keep a copy. You know, I reckon. And because it's a timeless piece, you know. In the next 20, 30 years, somebody somewhere will bring this out True. and say, what are you telling me about UI? Do you know this? Do you know that? You know? So, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's worth the price tag. Mm. And I'm going to do a fine banner by saying, is this will be our own complimentary copy? Well, well, you can have it for TWFI, yes, yes. which you will uh, <laughs> yeah. sign. Autograph. You will autograph for us after okay. on the show actually. No problem. Um, while you're doing that for us, I have a pen here. Okay. Let me also ask you, as somebody who is from an electronic background, I know that you uh, are from the print background. Yeah. Uh, I also worked briefly, very briefly, with the Guardian newspaper in '92 okay. before I moved to this side uh, of the media. So, I'm thinking. Are you planning the electronic version of this? Yes, in the yes, US future? yes. Since we we uh, veered into the um, higher institutions, yeah. you know, we really really found a need to to have an electronic version of all our publications. Okay. So very soon, in a matter of days. Would you know, be partnering with a media organization like maybe like us to partner with you to work on the electronic uh, angle while you're working on the print angle? Well, what, what I so mean by electronic, really what I mean by electronic is like uh, generating a movie okay. out of all these oh, archivist oh, oh, materials. We've not thought about so that, that those who don't like to read. We'll just we'll look at least it. have a place where they can go mm. to watch. Maybe mm. they just pay some subscription mm. or the or the movies released maybe sometime down the line. Mm. You know, that sort of a thing. I'm just thinking of some other business opportunities. That, that's, that's actually ingenious because, um, you know, movies and all the electronic um, platforms have because it's the power of intrusion. Yeah. 
you know, and it's a screen can... focused world yes. we live in now. Yes, exactly. A lot of people like their information sources to be in the palms of their hands yes. on their mobile phones. Yes. Now let me ask you, since you've been embarking on these projects over the years, um, have you had any low moments? And if you did, which one would be your lowest moment when you felt, I think I should do other things with my time? No, there's never been a time I felt that way. Yeah. There have been challenging times, like when clients um, don't pay on time, you know, and you find yourself in a whole lot of um, indebtedness and people think you're wicked, you're not paying bills, you know. But um, those are part of um, the things you face as a businessman. True. So, True. Um, and then once you stick, you will always overcome. So That's quite for me, motivation. I've never, I've never had any time that I think, um, oh, should I do something else with my time? Never. Mm. So your passion for the job yeah, has been seeing you through. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm quite impressed and I'm inspired. It's motivating to learn that there's someone who, in spite of the various numerous challenges, has never considered it as a low moment. You just saw it as part of the waves you need to ride yeah, in yeah. your way to the top yeah. in this business uh, model that you have set for yourself. I would like to know some of the strategies, the practical strategies that you adopt to deal with these challenges. Well, um, so that some of our people can learn. Well, you know, with the passage of time, the challenges come and go away. Yeah. When clients hope, maybe because they are going through a tough time too. Yeah. So once you give them a little bit of time, you know, you don't allow it to, 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 um, I mean, to put you down. But you have bills that are not you. Yeah, pay you have bills. That you, so, so most of the time, on. yeah, most of the How time. How do you deal with that? Yeah, most of the time, you know, we have. Um, um, streams of incomes that are hanging. Okay, so your strategy is to ensure that you keep all of the avenues yes. healthy and alive. All of the streams, all and of the that. receivables. Okay. We, all of the receivables, all the clients will never pay at the same time. True. So while um, one is um, stalling, the other one is performing. Mm. So somehow you so find that keeps the balance. Your cash machines. Yes, somehow you find oh, the balance. Yeah, relatively. Then you don't wait after each project. You know. You don't wait. You don't wait. So almost immediately after one, you're already um, starting another. So sometimes it's a new um, project, project that will pay for the old bills. Mm. Yeah. While that one is still there. While that one's still there. Wow. I think I like that strategy, but I still want to know because you will still feel some pressure one way or the other. How do you manage the pressure? Because for a lot of entrepreneurs, receivables, having clients who refuse to pay is killing businesses no. and it's killing entrepreneurs elsewise because yes. you feel so much pressure. How? What's your own strategy? Well, the, 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 the strategy is um, simple. Just engage your client. Make sure you engage your client. And um, we, over time, we've built relationships. We've built relationships with people and uh, businesses that we patronize over years. Okay. So they understand that we'll come back for another business. So it's not a one-off. So one of the things that pinches, pinches me most as a businessman is to do a one-off business with people or with businesses because it's not to my advantage. Oh. Yeah, it's not to my advantage. So if you, have been you doing, see the interaction as a chain? As a chain, An yeah. endless chain. Yeah. If we've been doing business over time, you know, you will understand when we are hoeing and uh, we're not able to pay. Mm. You will understand. You will even go into another business with us hoping that, I mean, things will turn around. Mm. Yeah, but if you are new, I mean, I, I want to do business with you for the first time, then I'm asking you to do, uh, not, I mean, and then I, I can't pay. 
Mm. You know, it's um, there's no way you find you not find any any justification to believable. To you not find it believable. So yours, but if you have paid before yeah. in the past, you will be able to. You, I mean, you find a justification for our excuses mm -hmm. or our reasons for not being able to pay now. You find a justification for it and say, "Oh, we have done business before and they have paid, so they will pay." So the antecedents will give you that reassurance. We'll give us that assurance. Yeah. But I mean, one thing I'm taking away from what you have told us about how you deal with the pressures of chasing after clients to pay for services is the fact that you see your business relationships as a continuum, yes. an endless continuum. Yes. Uh, so you're not approaching it from a myopic perspective no. or from a short circuit or one-off perspective. No. And you seem not to be the type that counts as chickens before they are hatched. No. Good strategy. Good yes. strategy. Uh, yes. you, maybe you're not like the average Nigerian who is about money, money, money. Mm -hmm. You seem to be more about throwing the values, creating the values out there and creating more and more values on a continuous basis. Exactly. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Now, let's look at the magazine publishing business. We've been talking about this year innovative business model uh, all this while. Let's look at the magazine publishing space generally. Uh, how would you describe it globally vis-a-vis -vis what we have on the African continent at the moment? Well, globally, it's, um, it's an interesting business, you know, because, um, uh, because of the timelessness of your products. Okay. You know, up to now, some people have copies of um, magazines printed um, 50, 60 years ago. True. Yeah. It's, it's not perishable. It's not, it's not perishable. Magazine publishing is not perishable yeah, like so, newspapers yeah, so, or even TV or radio. So even when the chips are down, you know, you still find the, um, inspiration from the work that you have done over time. Coming up. I would like you to share with us, if you can, how are you ensuring that this, your business, outlives you? What are the entry points into the magazine publishing business? Well, like I said, if you want to get gain expertise or competence, you need to go and get yourself um, the career, the career in uh, in the industry. That's the entry point. That's the Start, main that's entry, entry point. point. Yes, that's uh, entry point. So, but for some of our young people out there who want everything fast, fast, sharp, sharp, like they say, that's like a long process. Can't I just raise my money and employ people who already have the expertise, put them together, give them the vision, and then roll? Yeah, even and if, learn as I go. Even what they want to do is also a long process because mm. um, the difference is somebody is starting from the scratch and the other person is starting from the top. So the only progression is to keep coming down. If really? you start from the top, you have to be coming down. Really? That's the only way to go. <laughs> but, but if you start from the scratch, you will keep coming up. Won't that discourage people out there? Oh, you're saying it's better for them to discourage than to burn their fingers? Yes, it's better. Oh. It's better to learn how to do things right. Okay. It's better to learn how to do things right. It's not discouraging. If, um, uh, I mean, the likes of everybody who have succeeded in one career or the other has um, put in a lot of hard work. Mm. So you should avoid shortcuts, yeah. as it were. Shortcuts. What about the revenue streams? I mean, besides the circulation figure, what other revenue streams are open to magazine publishers? Well, the one, one of the most um, fantastic stream that is being ignored here is the, the one that, is, um, that comes in online. Mm. You know, it's, uh, it's global, but we are not tapping into it at all. So apart from sales. Sales at the newsstand. Uh, then the adverts. You should explore uh, yeah. the internet. The internet, yeah. 
you could gain a lot of revenue a lot, from there. A lot, a lot. And then you were also talking about what else? Adverts? The adverts, which is dropping every year. Yeah. It's dropping every year. Yeah. Well, one day, one of these days, we're still going to bring you back to explore why the advert budgets, the advertising budgets is dropping. Is for the same? print medium. Yeah, for print. That's for what print, I mean. yeah. Because Even for electronic. I mean, because that's where I play more. Uh, because, you know, even in spite of the fact that um, electronics have the power of intrusion, yeah. you know, which the prints don't have, yeah. you know, there are other competing platforms. Then, I think about um, 15 years ago, researchers have found out that public relations has a better way of penetrating the consumer's mind mm. than advertising. Than advertising. That's why, if you look at it globally, the spend, the budget on PR is rising. Yeah. And that of advertising, advertising is dropping. Is dropping. Yeah. And that's one of the things that um, 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 triggered this idea. Mm. Because this is PR. Yeah. This is PR. Yeah. And I was going to, as you mentioned that, I was going to say, shouldn't that be good news for magazine publishers? Because it is in, it is in magazines that PR opportunists can find strong leveraging point than in newspapers or some of the other publications that have more perishable lifespan? It depends on what um, what part of um, publishing you you have, you know. If you're running news magazine, you can't do PR. You can't. You can't, you can't do PR. You can't. Otherwise, you'll be feeding your readers with... Um, and you'll be detected and anyway. Be detected. And that's going to yeah. backfire. Exactly. So, okay. if you're a news magazine, you have to do the stories. Let's explore other revenue streams open to magazine publishers before we leave you. Uh, Besides those four that you mentioned, and yeah. the other ones, what about events? Yeah, events too, you know, it's, um, that's PR. Once you key into events, it's PR. Okay. You know? But that's not what people want to read. That's really? not news magazine. That's not what people but want to read. But what about for lifestyle magazines and for business magazines? Can't we have events, yeah, feature, they, they special should do, features, they should do more, supplements? They should do more with events. Okay. The, the, the lifestyle magazines should do more with events because lifestyle is uh, basically PR, PR stuff. So they should do more with events. So that could be a revenue stream for cool. lifestyle yes. magazines. What about business magazines? Business magazines with PR, yeah, because you know, um, a lot of businesses now are buying, spending a whole lot in PR. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of business magazines should also look at uh, how they can integrate uh, PR into what they do and make so much money. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Now, let's look at ethical consideration, because that's the worry of many practitioners and even some non-practitioners, but who are concerned about the industry. If I were to go into magazine publishing, what are the major ethical issues that I need to be concerned with? Well, um, <clears throat> again, it depends on um, what um, the editorial area, focus. Yes, be. editorial focus. You know, if it's um, if it's PR, you know, the 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 client, the the brand of the client, should never be subsumed huh. under your brand. You know, then um, in advertising, you know, sometimes you open pages of um, um, magazines and you find unethical placement of adverts. So yeah. people don't know that you don't place um, um, competing brands to face each other. Really? Yes. I'm just learning that. Too. Yeah, you don't place competing brands facing each other in your magazine. It's unethical. It's unethical. So those so are... are promoting a war. Yeah. Those are... What are the other ethical issues? Ethical issues that I can also say in my own side 
apart from what I've said, is um, um, not um, keeping to your MOU with your clients. You know, when you when you initiate business, you always start from the point of MOU. You must keep all the rules. Very important. Yeah, very very important. Tell us more. Because ethics is a very serious issue in today's business. Very, Corporate yes. governance yes. is a very serious issue. Yes. And a lot of people, unfortunately, that I have observed in our client don't pay cognizance to those corporate governance issues until it burns them. Yeah. They usually don't pay attention to yeah. it. And that's why it's very important on a platform like this for us to, 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 to project it out there so mm. that those who may be ignorant mm. can find it useful going forward. Prevention, they say, is better than kill. Mm. So what are the other ethical issues or corporate governance issues that you'd like to advise those potential uh, publishers out there? Yeah, you know, keeping your corporate um, governance um, rules is, um, is a report, is, a, is, a, is like a scorecard yeah. for the integrity of the business. Yeah. You know, once you set the rules and you're not keeping the rules, I mean, you, then there's no, you can't lay any claim to integrity. Uh. So, I mean, corporate governance is everything. Once so people should consciously, intentionally and yeah. deliberately yeah. design their corporate governance yeah. rules. Rule. They should go out of their way yeah. to find, just the same way you go out of your way to put together a business plan, exactly. you must also put together a corporate governance exactly. uh, public booklet. booklet. Uh, and you must work according to the adhere dictates, strictly. adhere strictly yeah, to, to, to the dictates, to of, the that dictates of that rule. Um, well, what would a normal, a regular, let me say, not normal, there are no abnormal publishing houses, what would a regular publishing house be like by way of staffing and personnel? Well, um, it's always... Uh, um, look at the departments. Yeah, it depends. Again, it depends on the area of focus. You know, sure. it depends on the area of focus. For 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 a news magazine, there's no way you have not have overwhelming um, percentage of um, yeah, personnel. Uh, editorial overwhelming percentage of editorial against all other departments. But for us, you know, we have more people in marketing than editorial. Yeah. Well, before we let you go, um, I would like you to share with us, if you can, how are you ensuring that this, your business, outlives you? Well, um, <clears throat> the basic thing to do is to always um, uh, bring in a lot of young people who can take over, over time. You know, initially when I started, uh, I was working with people who were even older than me. But with time, I realized that I was doing the wrong thing. So I had to re-engineer that um, um, place and uh, get them young, keep them, train and retrain them. That way, they will be able to innovate and bring something new mm -hmm. on the table and then um, uh, show potential to succeed when you're tired. And you are convinced that that approach will ensure the longevity, sustainability, and ensure that the business outlives you. Yes. Mr. Balaji Adeshoko, thank you I so want much. to thank you very, very much you're welcome, for agreeing to come on the program to share your insights with us. You're welcome, sir. It's been mentally enriching having this conversation with you. Thank you, sir. And on that note, we call it wraps on the program today. Thank you so very much for staying there with us. Until next time, it's bye for now.